Hello and welcome back to the ultra exciting Star Wars Millennium Falcon Lego Mega Build. Where are we at? Page 273, part number 690. We're going along at a rate of knots here. Look at that. I'm already in. Not a moment's hesitation there. Uh, on the note of hesitation, I, I nearly wasn't going to be able to record this today. As I was saying, I was nearly going to not be able to record this today because I've had rolling power cuts. Um, any interruption to the video will likely be caused by that, the power going out. Now, weirdly, in the event of that happening, all that will actually occur is the lights will go off. It will go very dark. The camera has got a backup. The microphone is affixed to the camera. So this this series is by far and away the most portable one I do. However, the, the battery backup on the camera, I think lasts for approximately 30 minutes, which is, you know, it's long enough for a sign off. I doubt you'll be able to see anything in that time though. That's, that's where I've been at. And yeah, fortunately mere moments before the initial power outage, I basically drained my phone battery by accident. I had that to deal with. This, this ain't going well. And that goes like that. Is that right? There's no, there's nothing to get sort of a, a good grasp on anything's kind of relative relationship with this. I should be able to see six. That means it's too high up. I don't know. It's like it all exists in a vacuum. Oh, I'm sure it will come together on its own somehow. Ah, bastard. The heat wave has broken. Uh, the massive heat wave of the UK. It's now, it's now turned into a storm. Uh, strong winds. It's still quite warm though. It's not. It doesn't appear cold. I'm not wearing a coat. I've, yeah, I've I've still opted for for t-shirt before any considerations of weather. Those times will soon change, I'm sure. Okay. Yep. I swear, I, I feel like I've done nothing since I recorded the last episode of this. Which can't be true, but it, it seems to be. I think the main thing that's occurred is that No Man's Sky got its, its, its multiplayer update. That they, they, they just made an offhand post, like, I don't know, maybe two, three months ago or something, saying in July we're adding multiplayer to No Man's Sky. And then they, they just, like, mic dropped and walked away. And then, then they said, not a whole lot for a long time. Then they just released it the other day, and and it's been pretty huge. On top of on on top of adding multiplayer, they it, it was a huge update, all for free as well. They've done they've done a lot of big free updates to that game. It's deeply impressive. Rather annoying though. I haven't had a good chance to play it yet. Every every time I've been like interrupted somehow or not had a proper good session of it. And uh, my base got, not deleted, I think it was supposed to happen where they kind of destroyed everyone's base before it happened. Had I known that, I might have, I don't know, prepared for it a little bit better. Because I had, I had a fairly, fairly robust little farm set up going, you know, and I had vehicle stations, a nice little, a nice little guest foyer and, and what have you. That all got trashed. I'm told, though, if I... If I go somewhere and do something or other, like attempt to build a new base somewhere, it will, it will give me whatever I had like in storage in that base. Because annoyingly, if I, like every every now and again in that game, you'll be like given items and you'll get have a choice of like what inventory to put them in. My base inventory, like storage lockers and that, it still comes up, but I, I can't. 
if I put stuff in there, I can't get it out because I don't know where it is. And I've run out of hyperdrive fuel in my Starship because most of the, nearly all the technology I had and a lot of stuff just got sort of trashed with the update. So I, I essentially got credits for it. Um, so I'm somewhat stranded in a fairly new location, which is quite funny. Um, the one thing I did have though is a lot of money, like something to the order of 50 million credits, which, which as it turns out now is a lot of money. So I have no, no technology and no real resources except a significant amount of money. And I was fortunate, apparently when I last played, one of the last things I did was brought a new, like, really good ship. So I've got a really good ship. It's got no upgrades on it, but like just just the base of it is is decent. What am I doing? I'm like, I've done that step, I'm on this one. Ah, I don't know. Hmm. Well, this can't be right. How have I gone wrong? Okay, so let's see, was I right at let's take them all off. Was this this stage correct? Should be three, six, seven, eight, three. Well that's that's correct. And then by by the simple addition of these two bits, somehow it goes wrong. But how? Should be six. That's still correct. Ah, I just added everything in the wrong order. That's how it went wrong. Okay, we're good. We're safe. I Somehow I just blanked out a huge red section. So I, I used my, my newfound wealth in No Man's Sky. I was... I was just flying about in this this like solar system I'm stranded in. I landed on a planet thinking, well, I'll make a base on this planet. And as I landed, it just it said like extreme heat storm or something. Not not just like a storm, like a thermal storm. It's extreme, and I couldn't see shit in my ship. I got out and it, and it's it's it came up saying like two minutes to death. Oh, it was even less than that. It was like thirty seconds till catastrophic suit failure. I was like, I can't live here. I'm not, I don't have the, the abilities necessary. So I, f I flew to another planet and thought, maybe I'll make this my base, you know, gather some resources, that sort of thing. Turns out sentinel activity on that planet, a little bit aggressive. I, um, I attracted the ire of one sentinel who I killed. Back in the day, you used to kill a sentinel and then, you know, maybe two more would show up. And if you killed them quick enough, you'd be done. Apparently now the way it works is you kill one, then two show up. You kill those two, then two show up, plus like a four-legged dog sentinel that's stronger. You kill those, then two more sentinels show up, but also what I can only describe as an Imperial Walker sentinel, which is huge and impervious to all of my weapons at the time, and will track you down to the end of time. And I spent a, a good sort of 10 minutes trying to get back to my ship from that one and he ended up killing me which weren't too bad because I could recover all my stuff anyway uh, and it turns out if I got to my ship it wouldn't have been good anyway because on another occasion when I was being chased by them I got into my ship flew into space and they just sent sent some drones after me into space and and they basically um, went after me forever I killed maybe 20 of them and they just kept coming in greater and greater numbers so i i decided i was I, I was running to a, a space station at the time i had a choice i was like space station here my 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 fleet is here i went for the space station because it was slightly closer hmm i've not finished doing this yet still many more parts to add Yeah, so I was, uh, so I, I, struck, I couldn't find a new home planet in this system I was in. They were, the planets were either too dangerous or too lifeless to support my, 
my agricultural needs. So I left it, and as I was flying around, I saw a frigate arrived. I thought, oh, frigate, not a frigate, a freighter. I thought, oh, maybe, I could, maybe I'll see what the cost of freighters is now. They might have changed it around. It turns out they had, because I landed on it, and it was, it was a steal at about 12 million units. So I thought, oh, I'll have that. So I got myself a freighter, came with a frigate. That's like a, that's a ship that's bigger than your ship, but smaller than the freighter. And it turns out you can send those on uh, like away missions and, and expeditions. And essentially whatever the, whatever the guys in Star Trek are doing week, week to week. So I did that, it went very well. Another fleet arrived, and I sold a load more fr uh, frigates. So I brought a load of them. So I've I've now got my own little fleet of ships, which is it was very pleasing. Uh, sent them on an mission, and they they've all they've all sort of become damaged, and are adrift in space now. And I don't know how to save them. <laughs> I haven't really looked into it. Uh, I'm assuming it will be as easy as finding them and giving them supplies to repair themselves. I'm, I'm hoping that's the case because my, though I had great initial funding from my past self, I don't have much in the way of revenue. So, you know, it's, it's I can buy all this shit now, but unless it's going to earn me some bunts, it's uh, it's all my money gone. Okay, I think that's good. Let's uh, get this section ready to go. And to be honest, I'm at the stage where all I want to do is is play No Man's Sky. It's funny. I was I was super into Fallout Four, then I kind of hit that point where the game was like a little bit too easy, you know, like where you where you've hit that level amount where you've you've sort of become just like strong enough that nothing's really an issue for you, and um, any more leveling and it's you know everything will sort of outpace you because it, you haven't got any more combat upgrades to buy. I hit that sort of point and I kind of, I, I, I flopped over into playing Lego Marvel Superheroes, is that what it is? The first Lego Marvel game. Uh, with the intention I was going to 100% it, because actually Lego games, my favourite bit is the bit after you complete the main story and then you start unlocking everything. I, I really like doing that. It's, um, I think it's, it's that thing where it's, there's a lot to do. None of it's none of it's overly challenging, really, and you normally know when ever you come up to a challenge, it's like, yeah, I I can do this. Um, so I was doing that, but then I I got I did like ninety five percent of it, let's say, and there was um, I think it was like a bug or something. You know, Lego games often there'll be a bug like, oh yeah, to get this gold brick, you you like. You dig here, it opens up a trail to the next one. You dig here, it opens up a trail to the next one, and so on. I was doing one of them, and like the trail that opened up to the next one, it like you're walking along it, and it just stops. It just blatantly stops. I'm like, this is, this clearly seems like a bug, and I'm not, I'm not too bothered to be honest. It's not like I'm doing it for the achievements. I was just having fun, and then No Man's Sky got the update. I was like, yeah, I'll switch to this now. It's actually left me in a. At like an odd place because I'm hoping my fondness for No Man's Sky will run its course by the time Monster Hunter World, come, World comes out on PC because that's one I'm, I'm really looking forward to. But I don't want to get that if I'm still into No Man's Sky, so I've got to, yeah, I've got to prepare myself. And on the other hand of it, the more I wait on Monster Hunter, the better because you know it's a PC game. Odds are it's not going to be a hundred percent perfect at launch. Although early reports are good. If this is at all loud in the background, it's because of the uh, immense storm that's ravaging the country. If only I had uh, a, a starship like in No Man's Sky, just fly away to another lifeless planet. That is something they've also had, like, they've added loads of stuff, but now there's, there's a lot more people about. Whereas before it felt like, you know, every now and again you'd come across a lone entity and they'd never be surprised to see you. It'd be like, they're used to seeing people all the time, but you're not, and it's very odd. But now you can go to a spaceport and there'll be like 20 people there. 
NPCs, obviously, not real people. The galaxy is far too vast for that to be a common occurrence. There's a sequel to a film coming out that I'm very excited about. And I, I feel no one else really is. And that sequel is The Equalizer. <laughs> the um, Denzel Washington remake of the old TV series, which I saw in the cinema and I had an immense fondness for, to the point where in my mind it was better than like John Wick. Um, it cut, in, Initially it felt like it had the vibe of being a Taken style action film where, you know, the, the hero was a bit older not past it, but in the context of the story. I'm not saying Denzel Washington is past it. I'm saying in the context of the story, he was he was sort of over it. And then it's like, you know, he retires, but then he gets bored. So he comes back into the fight, as it were. I'll put that in there. I don't think it goes there. Oh, well. Probably right. It's the worst that could happen. Um... Yeah, I just I had a lot of fun watching it, and I wasn't I wasn't too taken by the the first John Wick. I love the second one. Um, I just thought I thought the first one was a little, little bit lackluster, but it did come out in this country like six months after it came out in America. So there was obviously a lot of fanfare from that that had built it up, and then had had time to kind of die down a bit. So. By the time it had come out, it's like, well, I knew I knew the fanfare, and then I watched it, and I was like, eh, it's all right. It's calling for me to put lots of small parts on, and I'm, just, I'm struggling to find them in this mess. Where am I? I'm assuming all I've got to do is build this section here, because there's really not a lot of parts left. Huh. Sorry about that interruption. The... Uh, the lights began to dim and it was a, you know, I had to go and batten down the hatches and make sure life support was on generators and what have you. Also, I've just put a load of like, small, like one by one Lego bits on here. And I, I don't know why, but thematically speaking, it, it vaguely reminds me of, of people who don't know how to type properly and just do it like, like one finger at a time. It's, it's very, uh, very reminiscent of that. Well, nothing against you if, you if that's how you type. Just, um, you know, you were never taught. It's fine. I was never taught to type. I've got my own garbage style. It's fine. It's not something you have to do that often anymore, I find. What do I need? I need a little grey bit. Where would it be? I, I don't know why but i feel like the angle of the lights today is sort of such that it's it's hitting every piece and making them all quite hard to look at and quite hard to tell what color they are i'm not gonna say it's not here but it does appear to not be here it should it should be around here i feel this seems like the sort of place it would be but it's not visible. Now, here's the thing. I've just pulled the bit I need from over here. It was a spare bit from, from earlier on, even though I'm pretty sure it wasn't a spare bit. It was just I forgot to put it on somewhere. So that's, that could be, that could be bad. It could be good. It's, it's, it's hard to say. It's, um, it, that's a problem for the future, you know. Sometimes you can face problems immediately as occur, they occur. Sometimes you just save them. Just know you're going to have to deal with it eventually. It doesn't have to be now. It can be later. A lot of people will give the advice of, you know, if, if you have a problem, you should, you should deal with it straight away before it escalates. This is true, but sometimes it's nice just to, just to let it percolate. The problem may get worse, but you're... Your, your subconscious is always thinking about it so that, you know, there's every chance that even if it gets worse, you've already thought of a solution to that. That's, that's the Ben system for crisis management. 
that strikes me as the sort of thing where you, you'd get sent on the on some dumb sort of seminar thing as part of work somehow and that would be the advice you you'd get and it would it would work briefly like I don't know it would work for a couple of weeks and everything would be going fine and then then like a whole heap of trouble would arrive and and it would be like what would what would the Ben system teach us and you realize it's it's all a crock of nonsense so I'm just I'm off in the distance on my speedboat living large my god oh I was looking at this thinking this is not what I need what I need is all black and greys and it's actually the other side it's actually shades of greys just somehow worse I'm still on my uh, my fasting diet it's uh, it's going very well. I hesitate to even call it a diet, really, because it's not. It's more of a more like a lifestyle. I was um, I was reading up on someone's blog of it recently. How that how they they've been doing it for like a year or so, and they're like, yeah, it's not. Um, it's actually medically proven to you know be a good thing to do since. I think like the, there were the studies dating back from the 50s and he was like, yeah, unfortunately yeah, because of uh, like Muslim communities have Ramadan where there's extended periods of fasting. So like, there's actually a lot of data on it and most practitioners do say, yeah, it's, it's pretty healthy to do so long as you're in good health to begin with, obviously. If, you, if you're sick, you shouldn't do it. But that's, that's true of everything. Um, and he, he went on to say, but it's not really something you'll see publicised much because... No one can make any money off it. <laughs> no, 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 like no food company is going to advertise that as a method of weight loss, is it? It's, you know, just, just don't eat. There's, weight Watchers aren't going to make anything off that. It's like, yeah, here's here's the new plan. What you've got to do, right? Don't. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> um, it's it's one of those. It's like, oh yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That's our capitalist society will fail us there. It's, it's you know there's no there's no big conspiracy it's just it's just sort of a few coincidences drawn together and it's like oh yeah that, that does make sense isn't it there's no evil plan behind this it's just it's just the way it's occurred and it's it's also very important um you don't take it too seriously you know it's like oh, you, you don't have to be militant about it but the way I would describe it is, um, there are some people who are who are vegan or vegetarian for reasons of they're against animal cruelty. It's fine; it's your choice. If I, if I had that kind of willpower, I might I might consider it. And then there are people who do it because not a big fan of meat, or they're a bit tight, or you know they don't want to pay for it, that sort of thing. And th you know, and then like. If they're if they're at someone's house for dinner or something and they've made them a like a nice vegetarian option with a bit of cheese and honey on it, I don't know what has cheese and honey on it. That's a decadent meal already. They ain't gonna turn it down. They'll be like, oh, yes, that's fine. I, I wouldn't normally eat this stuff, but as you prepared it and it's here, if I if I don't eat it, it's just gonna go to waste. Anything. It's it's a practical thing. I think it's the same reason. Is it Buddhist monks aren't vegetarian or or they? They won't. They'll never prepare meat for themselves. But if if it's if it's offered to them, they'll take it. Because it's like yeah yeah. Don't 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 kill the meat yourself. But if it's already done, you might don't let it go to waste. There's, there's some logic to it like that. Point being, if I'm currently on a fast and I don't know, I'm with a group of friends and someone says pizza, yeah, I'm down for that. It's a very roundabout way of saying I had a pizza the other night and it was bloody delicious. Chorizo, like proper chorizo, that's the key. The kind of chorizo that when you cook it, it releases a ludicrous amount of oil and like that real like sort of dark orange greasy oil that you know is going to be delicious. It's like infused with the flavours of, of pig and the spices of the chorizo. It's like, oh, oh it's good so good I couldn't stop eating 
I'm, I'm not even putting anything on at this point. I'm just picking up all the parts because there's a ridiculous amount. And I know if I don't do this now, I'll mess it up. Right, I think that's everything. Nope. Lit literally the first piece I need I hadn't picked up. That's for the best though. If you're going to miss out one, that's the one to miss. Okay, so there's that. So, before I watched Parks and Rec, someone, um, a friend pointed out to me, or sort of said, you remind me a bit of Ron Swanson from Parks and Rec, which obviously I didn't know what that meant at the time. And then another friend who was with them said, oh yeah, yeah he is a bit. It's fine. I, you know, I, I took no offence from that. And then later on, I went to watch Parks and Rec, loved it, of course, and thought, yeah, I am a little bit Ron Swanson. That's fine. Yeah. He's a, uh, you know, he's, there's some issues with his character. He's not, he's not perfect. It's not like saying, oh, oh yeah, you, you're a bit like Superman. It's like, yeah, so I agree with that. No, there are. There are issues to the character. Uh, for example, like he, he says he doesn't want friends or anything like that, but then he gets lonely towards the end of the series. Things like that. He, he learns to grow as a person. And then I realised that by having this YouTube channel, this is my Duke Silver. Specifically because I, I don't ever like mention this sort of thing to anyone. And people who know me, like if you told them that I did this, they wouldn't, it, w it would just seem so out of character to them, they wouldn't believe it. That's not to say I keep it overly secret or anything, it's just I don't, I don't mention it. Just an odd character quirk. All right, see I've jumped in as though I'll be able to build this on the fly, but actually it requires so many small parts. If I don't set them all out to start with, I will mess it up. And, uh, see the little corner flat bit there they are. All right, that's nice. So back to the equalizer. Equalizer two is coming out. EQ two. Now I'm, I'm really hoping that they, they like open this bad boy up and make it a ludicrous franchise. I don't think they can. But I'm hoping they do because I, I, I want it to be good as well. It probably won't be honestly. But I don't know if the first one was good, that's the thing. I know I liked it, but I, I'm still not sure it was good. Maybe I was just in a good state when I saw it in the cinema. I'm not, I don't think I've really watched it since either. Um, right, yet more intricate little details to be added. And the first three of those so easily, and now the fourth one eludes me. Why, oh why? Corner piece, and a little triple flat, okay. Right, so this is quite complicated actually, the way all these parts are added on. They're all gray, like the exact same shade of gray. Which makes it kind of hard to look at the picture and know exactly where they've gone. A big part of Lego is, is the equivalent of, of playing spot the difference, which uh, if you're not familiar, what, what you'd get is like on the back of a cereal box or on a kid's menu, or sometimes in like a children's magazine, these sort of places, print media essentially aimed at younger children, you'd get two near identical pictures printed side by side with, you know, one would be such and such, and this would be that picture, but with small details added or changed, like someone would have an additional stripe on their tie, or if they were wearing this shirt, there wouldn't be a star in the middle, it would just be blue, that sort of thing. Uh, that's my description of spot the difference. And behold, the best bit of Lego, you take this bit you've just made, and this bit you've also just made, and put them together somehow. Could be like that. I think it's like this. Yes. 
Now that looks off center to me. I'm hoping it's, it does appear to be intentional. Um, I hope that's correct. I think it is. I'm at the real nice point in the bag where I kind of know where everything is and there's not too many pieces. There's not too much searching around. But then on the other hand of that, it, it also means that I'm imminently about to open the new bag, which is always a slightly disheartening topic. You get the fun of opening the bag, which is always great. And then the, the immense sadness of realizing you no longer know where all the bits are and are familiar with what you're doing. Okay, let's put that to the side. I have to build up a little model. I'm really hopeful today that the end of this episode will nicely coincide with the end of this bag. Um, then I can finally find out how, how much I've slipped behind on my initial one bag, one episode thesis, which I did for one episode, and it nearly killed me. Nearly killed the camera as well. And a lot of aspects of my video editing. Three hours of 4K footage eats up a lot of space, as it turns out. Who knew? Everyone is the answer. Literally everyone. Came as no surprise to anyone, except perhaps me. I actually need to buy a new memory card. It's not that the one I've got is failing in any way, but it is failing in one way. It's only a 64 gigabyte one, which is pretty big, but you know, might as well go bigger now. But you know how SD memory cards have that little switch on them that it's like lock and the other side never says unlock, it's just lock. And no one really knows what that does, does it? You think, your instinct tells you that if you switch that up, it means you can't overwrite the information on the card, but I think it means you can't write on the card. But I don't think it applies to all things. And I've never once ever needed to use that feature in any way. It's never been useful. Um, except, however, currently, that switch has lost all of its... Um, all of its resistance, so that now like, if I turn the card upside down a lot, the switch can move itself under its own weight. And because to put it in the camera, I have to turn it upside down, it often locks itself when putting it in the camera, which is a pain. That's why I want a new one. And I've realized I should switch to a micro SD card, just with an SD card reader, because they're, for some reason, they're the same price, even though micro ones should be more than regular SD ones, shouldn't they? They're, they have to get more memory in a tinier space. How does that work? On, but, so if I did that and then just used the reader, the reader would take all the damage, and they're cheap. You, know, they're, you get them for free nine times out of ten. So that's, that's my current plan. There's probably a good reason not to do that. But it's my, it's my current intention to save me hassle. I'm also immensely tight, so I won't do that unless a, a good reason comes up. Normally reasons are, are, are tax-based. Like I, could, I can either buy a pointless memory card or give some of my earnings to the tax man. And I'm like, oh, I'd, yeah, I'd sooner buy a bit of plastic crap than, than give the government anything willingly. It's not to say I don't pay my taxes. I do pay my taxes. Don't, don't come at me. Please, God, don't come at me. All right, now I've gone in with too much of a laissez-faire attitude to this section I'm on, because it's actually very complicated, it involves many pieces, and I've probably already shot myself in the foot by putting in what I have. Also, I just got to use the word laissez-faire, which I don't know if I used it correctly, and upon saying it again, I felt very much like Del Boy from Only Fools and Horses whenever he speaks French. Uh, if you're not familiar with that show, it's about a Cockney gentleman who can't speak French. That's, that's a, as good a description as exists. All right, so I've got that, got that, got that, got that. Need those. Got, got, need, need. You remember the days, trading football stickers, that's what you'd say. Got, 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 need, need, need. I don't think I've, I was ever involved in a situation where anyone ever traded anything, though. You would just sort of compare your collections via those means, and then that would be the end of it. Or maybe I just, I, I didn't really care enough to, 
to get involved. Maybe that was the case. Always seemed like a waste of money to me. You got the stickers, what do you do with them? Other than you just have them at the end? No, it can be video games any day. Um, right, that. No. Okay, no, not time to add that yet. I'm trying to get ahead of myself. I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm about to add many pipes to this. And upon looking at the next section, I'm definitely about to add many pipes. Unrelated to the He-Man character, Manny Faces, who of course had many faces. I was actually quite a big fan of He-Man. Not the original, they did like a rebooted one. Um, I can't even remember when. I liked it though. Had good action. Had a lot of characters, which as it later turns out was just a method of selling new action figures, but but I didn't, I, I didn't really go in for action figures, so it never came to me. Well, it's not, it's not that I didn't go into them, it's just you very rarely actually got them for sale in England. Like, they, they wouldn't bother with that follow-up part. It's like, well, we've made the cartoon, we'll sell them that, but we ain't, we ain't shipping all this tat over here. It's too much work. People are too tight. Right, I've picked up this, and I've no idea where it goes. Not there, not there, not there. I might have picked one up to one too many up. I have, yep, that's what's happened there. Right, so that's that section done. Get the pipes ready. Yeah, even more pipes. Good grief, more pipes. Okay. Little broken one there. I now notice I've put in one of these clips wrong. That's fine. Very satisfying shade of red on this. In fact, all of the colours other than grey, other than the grey and light grey, are very pleasing in Lego. Particularly the red and the blue. And the green. I like the green as well. But not the light green, the, the, the darker green. You don't see it as often. Right, so I've missed putting on a clip here. Like that. Just a little bit, a little bit uneven. Ah, right, that's, um, that's that done. Okay, so two bits actually fell off. It fell as one. I'm going to use my immense toe base dexterity to pick them up, which I did. Little known fact, I have webbed feet. No, I don't have webbed feet. I've got two web toes, or two sets of two web toes. Four of, four of my toes are webbed. But not not like those four. It would be if the, if these are your big toes. It would be it would be these ones are webbed. But only only like one is quite well webbed and one is only somewhat webbed. But they are noticeably webbed. <laughs> it has no effect on me in any way. Contrary to popular belief, it hasn't improved my swimming ability. Or if it had, how the hell would I know? What, what kind of 0.01% bonus would I get from that? It's, um, it's actually a skill I'm quite, quite proud of. I, I'm very dexterous with my toes. It's, it somehow helps you be lazy but only if you like, only if you succeed on picking shit up the first time. If if you fail and keep going at it, it it becomes immensely more difficult than just bending over to get the thing. It's a certain kind of laziness, is what it leads to. Okay, that's that fully built. This will soon be fully operational. See, I'd like a Lego Death Star, but. 
but from a practical standpoint, it, it would be like a crap set. I know there is a Lego Death Star set, but it's a play set, so it's like it's like cut in half, and you can see inside, and it's got the rooms, which practically speaking is the only way you could make it. I, what I'd like is like a set like this, one of the UCS sets, but it just wouldn't work because it's just a it's just a grey ball, and because it's because it's practically so big, the only the only thing you'd be able to see on it, that, like if it was say this big, the dish would come out fine, but like all the gun turrets would look like nothing. The trench would be invisible. It just, it's just too impractical to build, and it's it's a reality of life. Or it would literally, just, it would be like just a solid, dense sphere of Lego. Which part of me would like to see? That would be a. No, oh, I'm gonna pop that over there. See, part, uh, another part of me is, is sort of eyeing up what to buy next, and there's a, um, what is it, a, a Y-wing that looks, that looks very appealing to me. I've got to be careful though, because initially, I got myself that shield helicarrier, that was the first thing I brought, and it was going to be like, you know, a once a year treat, a bit of Lego. And I ended up getting myself one for Christmas as well, because I thought, well, yeah, it's Christmas. Then I brought this just for no no real reason other than it was in stock, so I'm going down a very slippery slope. If I can if I can just sort of hold myself to more bigger sets and then only the ones that are more let's say Star Wars focused for now. But what if I got the Taj Mahal? What would that mean? There is there appears to be a conference of some sort going outside my door um, I think they're discussing every single thing in the world going on now at the same time uh, it's very loud I could ask them to stop Could go. I could walk in there and close the door that they all left open as they walked in. I did shut it. It was shut. They walked in, left it open. The only trouble is, if I go out there, I will be dragged into that conference and shit. There's no, nothing. Trouble is, I you know, Saturday is the one day of the week that is sort of me. I, I take as my own time. You know, I'll do. I do everything for anyone else any other day of the week. I very rarely do shit for myself. It's, it's why I haven't had any time to fully explore the new No Man's Sky, despite greatly wanting to. This is, is my day of the week. I sit, I play with my Lego. I was greatly interrupted because of the storms. finished listening to the uh, the Lost World audiobook and I was really annoyed because I loved it great book but there was a point where like there was a really tense situation where they were stranded on the island this is Jurassic Jurassic Park the Lost World the book's very different from the film but also kind of similar like the settings basically the same a few characters are similar it's but they're not the same they're they're similar that's the best way I can put it um, so I was, I was listening to that and it was a very tense bit where they were on, they were on the island all, all their stuff had just been wrecked by like T-Rex and shit they'd been chased off by by velociraptors and they were they were in this old shed essentially and it was like Christ we've got we've got no fuel we've got no way of contacting the uh, the helicopters we're, we're stuffed we've got no weapons and I was like oh it's going to be exciting and then then I looked and it was like there's 20 minutes left yeah, and then I looked and the audio, it said there was 20 minutes left. I was like, oh. So, I mean, obviously there's going to be a little bit of an epilogue at the end. So they're, they're going to get out of this pretty sharpish, I should imagine. And it very much transpired they did. It was like, like you know, raptors were closing in. They were beating down the doors. And then suddenly it's like, oh, there's a tunnel here. Go out the tunnel immediately to safety. There's like no no detail in it whatsoever. It was. It felt like a... Kind of a rushed ending, and then uh, there was sort of very little in the way of, of epilogue. 
which is annoying because it was, it's a really good book. The last in the series uh, by by Michael Crichton, at least. And that, it was one of them where I was like, I like Michael Crichton. I've read some of his other books or listened to his audio books, I should say. I, I often claim to have read a book when secretly I've just listened to the audio book. But I think in this day and age, it's you know, credit where it's due if you're you're doing anything vaguely self-improvement like that um so yeah i've read a lot of his stuff or listened to i say a lot i think actually i've only done those two and the andromeda strain but that's that's three things that's quite a lot isn't it imagine if you'd watched three of my videos that'd be insane you'd be dead don't need that um and then i, then I considered like looking at more of his work and going through it then i was like it's widely argued that that I've already listened to Jurassic Park, which is kind of his best thing. It also happens to be based on one of uh, well, not based on my one of my favourite movies is based on it. And then The Lost World, which one of my other favourite movies is also based on. I like, I'm kind of stuffed there. And then I thought, can I just? Is there a way of looking up, you know, <laughs> Jurassic Park rip off things? I was like, what I want is I want kind of a bit sci-fi, but not too much dinosaurs and ideally people surviving on an island that's sort of that's like the crux of what i like it doesn't have to be all three you know just one or two is good enough dinosaurs surviving on the island no sci-fi that's fine Arthur Conan Doyle style or uh, surviving on an island with the sci-fi but no dinosaurs that's that's lost that's what that is but if you could get all three then you then you're laughing Or, you know, the temptation is there to like re-listen to a series I've already listened to. Part of me wants to do Game of Thrones again. The risk there being is you, you know it doesn't end. It's not good to re-listen to a series that, that has no ending and likely will have no ending. And in fact, it's double jeopardy on Game of Thrones because not only is it very unlikely he'll ever finish the next book, let alone the last book that might happen after that, but also... The narrator, Roy Dutrice, fantastic actor, voice actor, he died. So, you know, if there there is a new audio book in 10 years' time, it will have a different actor. All the voices will be different. Best case scenario, they try and emulate the voices from the TV show. That will give the least amount of dissonance, I feel. Well, they, they, they could go nuts with it. They could have like a whole... A whole uh, whole production piece that wouldn't be insane. It's actually weird that they. I feel we're in a situation where, because podcasts are so big on the internet, I feel we should be facing a renaissance of the audio drama, and yet we don't. Which is odd because it seems like the platform is there. Audiobooks, I think, are kind of bigger than ever, but they're still very dry. Very rare is it you get the uh, World War Z style, multiple voice actors start uh, a actual like full full audio drama type things the BBC have been doing it for years but for some reason they'll, they'll play them on Radio 4 which is the BBC's like intellectual station they'll only advertise on Radio 4 so you have to be a Radio 4 listening to know when any of it is they don't they never repeat anything ever <laughs> And they have things on a very odd schedule. Um, well, no, it's a very old-fashioned schedule. Which means it's, it's next to impossible to actually chance upon anything. So it can quite often turn out like you'll, you'll be like looking at a, a book you might want an audio book of, and then you'll find out, oh, the BBC did a radio play version of this. And like, you know, obviously it will be shorter and a slightly different version, but nine times out of ten, it will be a better listening experience than an audio book. But then, you know, you'll have to pay for it and they'll have an archaic pricing system where you can't buy it digitally. You have to buy it on a CD and it will have a price of like 50 quid. And you'll be like, what? No. No way in hell. Support the arts. Yeah, but I ain't paying that much. I'm not made of money. So... It's told me to put these yellow bits on 
which is fine. But now I'm putting decoration on here and it doesn't sit flat anymore. So why didn't it, why did it tell me to put them on now? I'm putting them back on in a minute. Oh, maybe it's because of all the decoration that I'm about to put on. It doesn't want you to turn it upside down. That would make sense. But still, why don't they go after me? Yeah, I'm surprised like you don't you don't get more of the uh, audio drama style things. Or maybe it's this that I'm not aware of them. There was one I listened to called We're Alive, which was like a zombie survival thing, which was excellent. But then that finished, so I was sort of stuff. And I I feel like that finished, and it almost felt like it was a it started as a student project. They made it happen. And maybe it's just not profitable at all. But then there's loads of pro there's loads of podcasts that are. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's something weird about licensing that stops them from doing it a lot. What the hell am I making? I've made one of these before, and it confused me at the time. You put you put these bits together. There's a weird flange that goes in like that. Is that right? It's kind of forcing this in here. It doesn't want to go. Hmm, yes, maybe that's all fine. Um, yeah, so I've made this weird little thing that I made last time, and I've, it occurred to me as well that all this time when I've say, been saying I really need to have a good look at the old Falcon and see what it actually looks like, if I were to rotate my head, let's say 160 degrees to the anti-clockwise direction or left, there's actually a decal of the Falcon right here. It's actually extremely detailed as well, um, considering how sort of small it is. Just looking at that gives me a lot of indication. For example, there's gonna be a big satellite dish here, among other things. Um, there's some little tur turrety things going to build, build up here. This is all stuff that I I should have learned previously, and yet I didn't. Okay, so we're, we're ready to add. I've already forgotten where this yellow thing went that I took off and saved nothing by taking it off. Will this go on as smoothly as the last one? Which, if you recall, was not at all. You ready? Ready? Here we go. Done. No, that's nice. all right. Okay, this is. Hmm, that was too easy. I would say it's got a bit of a wobble on, but mm, it looks all right actually. So that's fine. Ignore all that. Now I've got these few final pieces to to build something out of. Um, oh, I see. Okay. I was confused for a while, but now I realize it's just telling me to build two of these. I'm, I'm still somewhat confused, but less confused about this. I'm, I'm mainly confused about how... Uh, Superman's weakness worked in, in Man of Steel and what their what the whole Kryptonian plan was. Baffling. I have made this backwards. Remarkable. So where does it actually go? That's the thing. It hooks on to this area. Okay, all right, the thing it hooked onto just came off rather abruptly, that's fine. Do I know how it goes back on? No, obviously. I'll assume a certain amount of symmetry though. This will be very sturdy once it's clipped together, but the actual clipping bit is not easy. Okay, all right, so that's that's on there. That's so according to this, 
You can almost see some detailing there. So there's there's definitely something. Uh, just just gentle. Apply a lateral force. There we go. You gotta be able to read the ley lines. That's the that's the real key. Now obviously that's not quite fitting on there. So let's just let's just push that down a bit. It's actually easier just to rip the whole thing off and put it on a new. Put that there. Take that a bit. There we go. Right. Now there's. Oh, thank Christ. There were these left, and I was utterly convinced I'd made a huge error that I hadn't put them on. But it, it seems that. Yeah, it's, it seems they're in place. And that, that timer tells me it's roughly the end of the episode, which is perfectly timed for finishing this bag off. I've just got to place these bits delicately, yet forcefully, around where they're not fitting at all here. Okay. Right, there's a bit of a flex going on, which is preventing the addition of this. And in fact, it's not going to go on in a hurry. Because this doesn't fit squarely for some reason. Okay, I've just ripped that bit off, that's fine. Hmm. Right. Okay, let's worry about that in a minute. Put this other piece on and go to hope. Does it go there? Let's flush with that. Okay, right, so that bit's on, so this side's fine. That's that's all good. And this pipe goes into this hole here. Okay, that's fine. So now, just, that's alarming. Right, let's bring the whole, the whole girl into play. Okay, right, I've just lifted that section out entirely. Okay, that's fine. I can replace that in a minute. Okay, and right, that bit's just come out as well with it. <laughs> they weren't in very well. That's, that's fine, I know where these go. It's, it's easy. That goes in like that. I think. Or, oh. right, that's come off, that's... This is this is fine. This is this is expected. This is this is an acceptable loss. Okay, so that that was loose anyway. That was that was good that that happened then. Right. Um, so what? What, what needs to happen here is this needs to go on like that. So this, this needs to move by about half a, half a unit. That detailing can go. That is inexplicable. It's less inexplicable now that I realize where it came from. Okay, right. Rotate that. So this is still a bit of a bugbear situation. Not sure where this came off of either. It's fine. I can rebuild. That's the joy of Lego. Mess up once. Shame on you. Mess up twice, shame on you again. Mess up a third time, great shame again. Right, I need, I need a diagram. I can't work blindly on this. What do I start on? Yes. Uh, right. 
see, I've found the diagram, but it's of the other side, which if I go by that, it's all mirrored, and that'll do me a mischief. Yep, this one will do. Right, so how does this go in? Hmm. That is cute out there. No, that's fine. That's fine. So this goes here. I'm in a situation where I'm having to essentially reverse engineer this part by just looking at the pictures and not following any specific instructions. It's incredibly risky. And I just realized I was looking at the reverse image. Uh, crisis was averted at the last second. So that's got to go around there. Yeah. Okay, right, so that's good. Is this, is this actually level? Okay, so that went on fine, but as I put it on, something somewhere definitely fell off. And I'm not even sure how it fell off. It's like the whole, the whole undercarriage just came off. That's a section that shouldn't come off easily. See, on the one hand, some people say, you know, they glue them together as they build them. And I always think that's a, that's a silly way to do it. Um, but I can see from a certain point of view how that does give you a lot of strength as you build. But the amount of mistakes I've put in this, I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to bet the farm on it. I've got an idea, and it's a risky one. If I don't put those bits in there, and I just lay it flat, I can sort of trick it into working. Damn it, this bit keeps coming off. I remember this being a pain before. Oh no, that's come off. You know what, just, you can stay off. You've lost your right to be a permanent fixture. So that's how it's meant to look, that's, yeah. So it can fit. So structurally speaking, the only thing stopping it from fitting is the way that these bits are being integrated. Now, how do they actually go on? Do they go here and here, I think? I'm not willing to find the page that tells me to, where to put these on properly. It's it's an immense degree of laziness. My memory is telling me that they go in this sort of pattern. So that could be correct. No, definitely need to find instruction on this. Damn it. Damn it all. This caused me issues last time, and it's causing me issues again this time. I'm slightly impressed, in all honesty. Right, so that's, that's in. Okay. So I need just to, just to gently sit that in, and it's got to be flush like that. Quick as lightning, soft as a feather. Right, so I've... Okay, so what's happened there is nothing's really gone in. And the pit just came off, it's fine. Quiet you. Live to aggro. This isn't. This isn't attached anymore. Oh god, this, this is becoming very traumatic. 
We'll look back on this and laugh one day, I'm sure. I remember saying it was no longer hot at the start of this episode. Suddenly I've become very hot. Hmm. Why isn't this fitting now? I've removed a bit that appears entirely superfluous. It may be my downfall. Looking at this, it's not square anyway. Something's terribly wrong with this whole bit. I can't imagine what. Well, let's call that the end of the episode and I'll solve this in my own time, I feel.